Hello, so this is Rules of the Road Part 3, communicating with others, distractions, and adjusting your speed to the road conditions. So, communicating with others. Accidents often happen because one driver doesn't see another driver. Or when one driver does see something, does something the other drivers don't expect. Drivers must let others know um, where they are, are and what they plan to do. This communicating, um, this is communicating. It includes using the headlights. Um, besides helping you to see at night, headlights can help other people see you in the daytime. On rainy, snow, or foggy days, it is sometimes very hard for other people to see your car. On gray days, cars seem to blend into the surroundings. Whenever the light is too dim for you to see a thousand feet ahead of you, you must turn on your headlights and at any time when windshield wipers are in constant use. Um, if you turn on the headlights a little early when it begins to get dark, you will help other drivers to see you. You must have headlights on when driving anytime from half an hour after sunset to half an hour before sunrise. Whenever you are moving and lights are unnecessary, use your headlights. It is not good driving practice to operate a motor vehicle with only the parking lights on. Turn on the headlights whenever you have trouble seeing other cars. If you can't see them, they can't see you. Motorcyclists are required to have their headlights on at all times when operating a motorcycle in Maine. Um, I actually didn't know that last part. Anyway, using the horn. People cannot see you unless they are looking your way. The horn can get their attention. Use it whenever you need help um, to prevent an accident. It will help prevent an accident. Or it can be wrongly used. You should not use them without cause or to make an unreasonably loud noise. Tap the horn lightly, well in advance, to warn others you are there. Try to avoid using the horn around bicyclists or horses because riders may lose control if startled. But if danger is near, don't be afraid to sound a sharp blast. Um, keeping your car where it can be seen. Drive where you can be seen. Do not drive in another driver's blind spot. Try to avoid driving on either side of and slightly to the rear of another vehicle for a long period of time, either speed up or drop back so the lane is clear. When passing another vehicle, get through the other driver's blind spot as quickly as you can. Using emergency signals. If your car breaks down on the highway, make sure the other drivers can see it. Some accidents occur because a driver doesn't see a stalled car until it is too late to avoid hitting it. If you're having car trouble and have to stop, if possible, pull all the way off the road out of traffic. Turn on your emergency flashers. If your car doesn't have flashers, use the turn signals. Lift the hood to signal an emergency. If you cannot get completely off the roadway, try to stop where people have a clear view of you. Try to not stop just over the hill or around a curb. Give other drivers plenty of warning. If you have emergency um, flares, place it, place them at least 100 feet behind the car. Large vehicles must place three emergency devices in specific places. This allows other drivers to change lanes if they need to. If you don't have emergency flares, stand by the side of the road and wave traffic around. Use, the cl use a cloth or flag if you have to. Stay off the roadway. Don't even change a tire if it means you have to stand in the traffic lane. Signal and change of direction. Other drivers expect you to keep driving in the same direction. If you are going to change direction, let them know by signaling with the directional lights or by hand if you have get it, yeah, it gives them time to react. Always signal before you change lanes, turn at an intersection, enter or leave your freeway. It's a good idea also to signal before you pull away from the curb pull over to the side of the road. If you do not signal, other drivers will not know what you plan to do. To make sure others do know, make it a habit to signal every time you change directions. Signal even when you don't see anyone around. The car you don't see is the most dangerous. Signal as early as you can, at least 100 feet before any change or turn. Use hand signals if the turn signals are not working. If you plan to turn around uh, beyond an intersection, signal after crossing. If you signal before the intersection, another driver might get the wrong idea and pull into your path. After you have made a gradual turn or lane change, make sure the signal is off. Um, so hand signals, they have here, you know, left turn. 
is just that right turn is that slowing down or stopping is that um, signaling when you slow down or stop unexpectedly your brake lights let people know that you are slowing down if you're going to stop or slow down at a place where another driver doesn't um, expect it tap your brake pedal three times or four times signal with your brakes when you slow down uh, to turn off the highway to park or turn into a driveway to avoid something in the road ahead of you that the driver behind you cannot see distractions we live in a 24 hour a day information driven society in which instant communications are an accepted part of life data shows that 91 percent of americans have a cell phone and text messaging has increased over 2200 percent in the last five years instant communications can make businesses more efficient increase productivity and bring other benefits to society including rapid response to emergencies however the use of communication devices in moving vehicles can distract the driver's attention from the primary task of driving in lean to crashes is critical and as devastating as those caused by impaired driving or other dangerous driving behavior distracted driving may now be single largest contributing factor to the traffic crashes according to the u.s department of transportation distracted driving results in nearly 6,000 deaths and more than half a million injuries in 2008 an in-cab driving study of commercial truck drivers by the virginia tech transportation institute um, indicated that by far the most dangerous distractions observed was texting the study revealed that truck drivers who texted while driving had 23 times the risk of being involved in a crash or a near crash incident laws that protect cell phone use and texting have an impact on safety but stopping the senseless crashes and deaths that distractions can cause is best accomplished by changing driver behavior to manage or eliminate distraction it is important to understand the three distinct types of distractions so the three types visual distractions that cause the driver to look away from the road and view something unrelated to driving um, manual distractions in which the driver removes one or both hands from the steering wheel or other driving control uh, to perform a non-driving task such as eating drinking adjusting mirrors turning on the radio um, programming a gps cognitive distractions, cognitive distractions in which mental thoughts and feelings distract the driver and divert attention and while the news media and regulation regulators have forced focus primarily on the dangers of texting and handheld cell phones use in moving vehicles other types of distractions are equally dangerous nearly all accidents involve a combination of two or even all three types of distractions short glances at vehicle instrument um, instrumentations mirrors installed communication devices or other technology technology can be done safely Using a cell phone cellular phone in your vehicle, properly use cellular telephone enhances driver safety. Um, provide a mobile alert network for to the community to help ensure car phone users drive safely. Please allow for common sense advice offered below. Recognize that driving requires your full attention. Before you get behind the wheel, familiarize yourself with the location and function of the phone's buttons. Pull off the road before dialing. Have your vehicle fitted with a hands-free or speakerphone. Pull off the road if the conversation is an emotional or complex one. Ask a passenger in the car to place the car for, call for you. Monitor traffic conditions before answering or making calls. For emergencies, tell the operator whether you are reporting a, a medical or a police emergency, your exact location, and whether there appears to be injuries. Put portable phones in the cradles to avoid they're becoming um, projectiles in a crash. A person who has not attained the age of 18 is prohibited, prohibited from operating a motor vehicle while using a mobile telephone or handheld electronic devices. A violation of the statute is considered a traffic infraction. Excessive sound system noise. A person may not operate a sound system in a vehicle or public way at a volume that is audible at a distance greater than 25 feet that exceeds 85 decibels or that is greater 
then, is responsible with due regard to the location of the vehicle and the effect on personal persons in proximity to the vehicle. Violations of this law is a traffic infraction and will be assessed um, $50 for the first offense, $100 for the second offense, and $150 for the third. All right, so adjusting your speed to conditions. What is a safe speed? How fast is too fast? It all depends on conditions. How fast you can drive and be safe depends on speed limits. Speed limits are posted on many roads. These limits are based on the conditions of the road, how far you can see, and what typical traffic is like. Posted speed limits do not tell um, you at what speed to drive. They say you can not go faster than the speed shown. If road and weather conditions make the posted speed unsafe, you must slow down. Maximum speeds in Maine, unless posted otherwise, are 45 miles per hour outside any business or residential or built up area, 25 miles in, per hour in businesses or residential restricted areas, 15 miles per hour when passing a school during recess or when kids, children are going to or from school during the school's opening or closing hours. It's difficult to know when these periods are. When in doubt, use extreme care. A fine twice that of the usual fine is imposed of exceeding the posted speed limit in the school bill. Traffic experts have studied road conditions, traffic, and accidents on the road to decide um, on a reasonable speed limit. It is illegal to exceed the posted speed limit. Racing on the highway and driveway recklessly are not allowed. Main laws also say that you must not drive so slowly that you interfere with the normal and reasonable movement of traffic, except where reduced speed is necessary for safety. Some highways may have a minimum speed posted speed limit. What is the road surface like? The only contact your car has with the road is through the tires. And at any time, the four tires together have only one square a foot of rubber on the surface of the road. Um, how good a grip this square foot provides depends on the condition of the road and the tires. Many new drivers do not pay attention to road conditions. This is why new drivers have more out of control accidents than, than the experienced drivers. Also, you want to check the um, tires tread and wear as described under the owner and maintaining a motor vehicle replaced tires, you know, for safety. So curves. On a curve, speed must be slowed to keep the car on the road. About two tons of car are moving in a straight line with only the front tires to control the turn. If the curve is too sharp or you have are going too fast, the tires can lose their grip and cause a skid. Slow down before you enter the curve so that you don't have to brake in the curve. Breaking in, the, breaking in a turn can cause a skid. Bad curves are usually posted with yellow diamond shaped signs. That is warning signs like these. So sharp curve, curve to the right. Water on the roadway. At low speeds, most tires will wipe water from the road surface. Um, it is like the way of windshield wipers clean water off the window. As you go faster, your tires cannot wipe the road as well. They start to ride up to the firm film of water, like water skis. This is called hydroplaning. In heavy rain, the tires can lose all co um, contact with the road at high speeds. Bald or almost bald tires lose contact at much lower speeds. In that case, a slight change of direction or a gust of wind could throw your car into a skid. The best way to keep hydroplaning is to be sure your tires are in good condition and that you are keeping, um, and that you keep your speed down. If the road ahead is slippery, it does not provide the grip your tires need. You have to drive slower than you would if you were on, on a dry road. Here are some guidelines um, for how much to slow your car. Wet road, slow down 5 to 10 miles. Pack snow, slow down to half speed. Ice, slow down to a crawl. Failing, falling or drifting snow, wet leaves or gravel on the road may make it slippery. Some road surfaces are more slippery than others when wet. These rows are usually posted with warning signs, such as um, the yellow sign posted on here. So stopping distance at different speeds on dry level. I'm not going to go through all this, but you can, you know, pause right here and read through it. 
So this is the last slide for this one. So some things to keep you from seeing. Darkness. You must be closer to an object um, to see it at night than during the day. Never drive so fast that you cannot stop within the distance you can see ahead of your lights. Headlights will let you see clearly only about 250 feet ahead. Therefore, you drive if you drive faster than about 50 miles per hour on a dark road, you are really driving blind. Rain, fog, or snow. Uh, even in, in very heavy rain, snowstorm, or thick fog, you may not be able to see even when you drive slowly. If this happens, pull off the road and wait for it until it clears. Intersections. Trees, bushes, or buildings at intersections can block your view of cars coming from the side. You need to approach um, a blind intersection slowly enough to be able to stop if a car pulls out suddenly. Hills or curves. Um, you never know what's on the other side of the steep hill or sharp curve. If it, a stalled car is there, you must go slowly enough to stop. When you come to a steep hill or curve, slow down so that you can stop if you need to. Parked cars. Cars parked along the side of the road block your view. People may be ready to get out of the car or walk out from between parked cars. Give parked cars plenty of room. Be ready to stop. So that's it. Thanks for watching.